KSP2 is and will not be a simple copy of the original game. Though, just like the first one, it has some interesting easter eggs. But they are different from what we are used to. In the past, we have seen dead whales, monoliths and mun arches. But now, it looks like the developers of KSP2 are creating something bigger. These anomalies seem to be connected. They are telling us a story of some kind. So today I will be discussing some of the anomalies that might be considered the most interesting out of everything that has been found up until now. We will start off with the golden arch on the moon that had already been hinted towards in the last KSP1 update. So besides the gold, we have the glowing orbs that represent the planets of the Kerbola system. From left to right we have Elu, Dres, Kerbin, Moho, Kerbol, Eve, Duna and Jewel. After staring at this picture for a while, I took a closer look at the sides of the arch. It is quite clear what the orbs represent, but does this decoration mean anything? The only thing I found noteworthy were these things. They kind of look similar to the eyes of the Kraken in the original game. And this swirling stuff could maybe represent the tentacles or something. But that's just me throwing something out there. But what could the arch as a whole be? Well, there are some people that are saying that it could be some kind of gate. Like the one from Stargate. It might transport us to another star system entirely. Looking at this, do you have any idea of what it could be exactly? Alright, let's move on to the next anomaly that we can find on Minmus, and people are calling it the Minmus Monument or Temple. So there's a figure standing in the middle, and on the ground there are some carvings. Around this carving on the ground, we have six obelisks in a hexagonal pattern, each with a sphere balancing on the top. When we look at the carvings, we see this pattern. In combination with the six obelisks, it could possibly represent the following. Kerbin in the middle, with its two moons going around it. Besides Kerbin, there are six other planets in the Kerbal system, and each of those could be represented by one of those obelisks. But it is interesting to note that this interpretation would mean that everything would be going around Kerbin and not Kerbal. It is a geo, or rather, geocentric view. Speaking of Kerbal, where is it in this monument? I'd say Kerbal is quite important, if not the most important when trying to represent celestial bodies, but for some reason it's not here. Something that is also interesting, the figure that is standing in the middle might look like a Kerbal at first, but when you look at their face you will see that they don't have a mouth like that of a Kerbal. They have some kind of strange tentacle-like things. So if this monument represents the Kerbal system in the Keocentric view, why is this creature not a Kerbal? Actually, there's a chance that you might recognize this creature right here. At the end of each developer video before the game was released, there was a hidden message to be found at the end. Together those messages formed this image right here. And it was inspired by the Arecibo message, a real life message that was sent into space by us humans for possible alien life to discover and decode so that they could learn more about us humans. So, let's start at the top. People have said that these dots just set up the width of the message, which is supposedly important when decoding the message. Then we find the Kerbola system right here, and it connects Kerbin with this rocket, indicating that the Kerbals are from Kerbin, the third planet. We then see a Kraken that destroys the rocket, followed by a line that goes somewhere and ends up here somehow, and leads us to this pattern. And I don't know what this means. But what I wanted to show in the first place is this, the weird alien right here. With of course, those tentacle things as its mouth. Could this be the same species as the one from the monument? Maybe. Post your ideas and theories down below because I want to make more videos as more information comes out. And if we put our minds together, we can come up with a working theory maybe. Now I would like to move on to the next anomaly and the one that I found the most interesting. And it can be found on Duna. It is some strange sculpture and what looks like a sleeping creature with a crown. And sprouting from their head there are five branches. One broke off entirely and so what it had remains a mystery for now. This branch leads to an orb and on top the same weird tentacle creature again that we saw on Mimnus. 
Then the branch on the right leads to this little guy, and this is a Kerbal, which we are of course all familiar with. This other branch is also partially destroyed, but it still gives us some information. On the top of the sphere we can see a pair of feet, and the rest of the body of this creature has been destroyed. I assume, based on what we are seeing with the other branches, that this is some other kind of species, on maybe another planet. Maybe each of these orbs that they are standing on represent the different worlds that they inhabit. But the middle branch leads to some bigger orb with a kind of star-like halo. These two creatures are looking up slightly as if they were looking at it, maybe worshipping this orb, or whatever it may represent. As a whole, the statue makes me think that this is some kind of evolutionary tree, as if these species literally branched off from a common ancestor that can be found here down below. But the crown also makes me think that it might be some kind of godly creature that made the species or something like that. The crown itself also has some writing going around it, and if you write it all down, you will get this piece of scripture. Sadly, I do not know what it means, but if you have a clue, please tell me. Finally, we move on to the last anomaly that can be found on Tylum. And it is another statue, but this one is quite a bit different from the previous one. The statue shows a, well, larger than usual creature balancing itself on top of this column, made out of stacked rocks. At first, you might think it is the same species as we saw before, due to the tentacles. But these tentacles are longer than what we saw before. Also, the eyes of this creature are different. It has slits, and the other ones, up until now, had pupils. So, could this be another species, and where does it come from? Moving on, we can see that it holds two spheres, one in each hand, but they are both glowing a different color. The most obvious thing would be that these represent two stars, possibly a binary system. On Reddit there was someone who claimed that this might be the third unknown star system and it could possibly be called Keg and or Toon. But what is this statue doing here on Tylo? It seems kind of out of place if it's from another star system. And before we end this, I want to share something with you. In a forum post from late 2013, squad member Jeff described an idea he had for connecting many easter eggs into a story concerning a civilization which predated the Kerbals. Experiments with interstellar travel resulted in the homeworld of this precursor civilization being flung out into an extremely distant orbit. Before they froze to death, they launched monoliths and other messages onto many planets and moons in the hopes of seeding intelligent life. Instead, they created the Kerbals, not so intelligent life. The planet would not show up in any map and would be too distant to be observed with a telescope, making locating it by chance nearly impossible. However, players will be able to find transmitters beaming out SSTV signals on various bodies, each one of which would provide part of the orbital parameters necessary to locate it. The planet would be a bit smaller than Kerbin, covered in ruined cities and frozen oceans, and perpetually in twilight due to being so far from Kerbal. This video is just to get the current anomalies together in one place so that we can start a discussion. As we find more clues and as more people come up with theories, we can bring it all together into one cohesive story. But for now, this is all that I have to offer, and let's theorize.